I step off the block and I'm feeling nice. You say I find a repeal and I took a U-turn just to pre that twice In the work till the G baptized Stuff off the block and I'm feeling good In this question, we get given a big circle with two triangles inside and we'd like to find its radius This is a really nice question because it takes us through quite a few different areas of maths Let's start off then with circle theorems If you have a look, we've got two triangles that are subtended by the same chord. That means if this angle is 120 at the centre, the angle at the circumference has to be half of that angle. So this angle up here must be 60 degrees. That's a circle theorem that we know. Okay, continuing on then. Now if you look, we've got in the big triangle, side, angle, side. And when we have a setup like this, we can use the cosine rule to find the opposite side to that angle. So we can find the length of this chord. Let's first of all write down the cosine rule and then we're going to apply it then. So the cosine rule is this, a squared equals b squared plus c squared Let's see a bit nicer, minus 2bc cosine of a. That is a cosine rule. Well, we're going to use this to find our a squared. That's this bottom side. We're going to call it a. And b and c, we can put them in either way. It doesn't matter for the cosine rule. So let's choose b to be 4, we've got 4 squared plus 5 squared, because that's the other side, we need to do minus 2 times 4 times 5 times the cosine of this angle, and that's the top angle up there, 60. Well, now we can start to simplify this a bit. So 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. 2 times 4 times 5 would be 40. But we need to remember that cosine of 60 is a really nice exact trig value. It's exactly 1 half. So 16 plus 25 would be 41, and we need to take away 40 times a half, which would be 20. So 41 take away 20 should give us 21. And remember that that was a squared. So if a squared is 21, then a must be the square root of 21. Well, let's write that down here then. So a is the square root 21. Brilliant. Next, we need to think a bit more about properties of triangles then. And the first one for us to think about is what kind of triangle is this? Well, this side here is a radius, let's call it r, and so is this side here. It's also a radius, so it must be an isosceles triangle, but these two sides are equal. What that means for us is that these two angles here and here must also be equal, and since this one's 120, we've got to have 30 degrees and 30 degrees to get us 180 in total. Okay. We're almost there then at this point. What we can do to finish off is use the sine rule because we've got an angle and its opposite side. And now we also have another angle and its opposite side. Or we could use the third one as well if we wanted to. Either pair are the same. And the sine rule tells us this. It tells us that a side A divided by sine of the angle A 
must be equal to, in a triangle, the side B over sine of the angle B. What we need to do to finish off this question is put some things that we know into the sine rule. So let's try it. Side A, let's choose it as root 21. And the angle opposite it is 120. So we want sine 120 equals the other side B is just R, that's our radius of our circle. And opposite R is 30 degrees. So we want sine of 30 degrees. At this point, let's think about making R the subject. So we could say R equals sine 30 needs to multiply over here, doesn't it? So sine 30 times root 21. And on the bottom of this fraction, we need to remember our sine 120. So on the bottom, sine 120. Okay, well at this point, we're gonna jump back over to here. So we've got R equals sine 30, nice exact trig value, that's one half. So we've got one half times root 21 divided by sine 120, well, sine is symmetrical about 90 degrees. So sine of 120 must be equal to sine of 60, which is root three over two. And at this point, we can start to see some things nicely cancelling out. One half and root three over two both have a factor of two on the bottom. So let's get rid of this one and also this one. And what we're left with then is we've got root 21 over root three. And thinking about surds, this is our very, very last thing to do. Root 21, we could write that as root three times root seven. So that could look like this. Root three times root seven with a root three on the bottom. And definitely now those two root threes can cancel out with each other. So this one, this one can cancel out. And that would leave us with our answer, which tells us the radius is the root of seven. So our answer is just square root of seven.